A very brief assignment. My assignment is to speak over your life and then we are done for the night. Hallelujah. Um, let me start by saying a big thank you to all of you. This is how we build our students. They are students in training and their practicum allows them to run the service, to have an opportunity to learn, to grow, to build. Out of these ones you are seeing, in spite of all the frailties, there are mighty men who are rising from them. Hallelujah. And this, this is one of the principles of leadership, that leaders do not maintain followers. They transform followers to leaders and leaders to agents of transformation. Hallelujah. And so I want to celebrate everyone. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for um, the love and labor. The School of Ministry students have worked tirelessly day and night, meeting, rehearsing, praying, planning, giving to make tonight what it is. And um, we shouldn't take it for granted. One more time, let's give them a big God bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. One thing that is common um, to light and salt is that both of them are solutions to a problem. Salt is the solution to decadence and tastelessness, while light is solution to darkness. And so when he calls us light and salt, in any case, he mandates us to first have this orientation and then like they taught us to prepare true transformation to encounters to see to it that our lives become solutions, real solutions to men, and by so doing, we'll give glory to the God of heaven. But as is our culture, people come to church for various reasons. Other people come as a continuation of their transformation. Other people come um, desiring an encounter because the matters in their lives, the problems in their lives, are problems and challenges that need urgent attention and it is only fair based on the mandate and the covenants that we have as spiritual leaders to ensure that everyone returns back at least with a word spoken over their lives you have heard you have learned and so i've just come to put a cap and speak over your life hallelujah proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21 tells us that death and life it says are in the power of the tongue it took speaking to allow light manifest and God said light be light did not just appear in other words light also submits to the power of the spoken word the Bible says and God said he started with him saying and he commanded light to be and the Bible says it was so I just want to speak a few scriptures, two or three of them. And um, I had the opportunity to go around the overflows, to walk around the auditorium, just doing my duty since I'm not preaching today. And this is still Koinonia, and I want to speak over your life whilst we prepare for a miracle service. By the way, let me encourage you next week, Sunday, please. I want you to invite everyone around this city. It's going to be a mighty time of deliverance and healing by the Spirit. And I want you to come with any point of contact, whether documents, anything at all. Just come with a point of contact. I'm going to be speaking over it. And let everything that does not name the name of Christ give way. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, two words came to me as I was just thinking and meditating over the prayers and the prophetic blessings that you receive. Number one is fear. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, let me just rebuke the spirit of fear, that God hath not given us the spirit of fear. There's a lot happening in our world today and some of us are already victims of fear. Financial fear, fear of your life, fear as a result of all kinds of medical reports. But this is the house of God. Therefore, I decree and declare over every one of you here, those connecting online, that in the name of Jesus Christ, the spirit of fear loses his hold over your life now. The spirit of fear loses its hold over your life now. I cleanse your mind from the influence of fear. 
in the name of Jesus Christ Deuteronomy chapter 20 please from verse 1 reading to 4 21 to 4 Deuteronomy it says wherefore Deuteronomy 21 to 4 it says when thou goest out to battle against thine enemies and seeth horses chariots and a people more than thou he says be not afraid of them for the Lord thy God is with thee which brought thee out of the land of Egypt verse 2 and it shall be when you are come nigh unto the battle that the priest shall approach and speak unto the people verse 3 and it shall say and it shall say unto them here O Israel ye approach this day unto battle against your enemies it says let not your hearts faint fear not and do not tremble neither be terrified because of them why for for the Lord your God is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies and to save you therefore I decree and declare everything that has overwhelmed you maybe bills maybe a negative report the situation you have found yourself and we found ourselves as a nation the reality of the times in the name of Jesus I remind you again and prophetically speak to you that God has gone ahead of you that God has gone ahead of you in the name of Jesus Christ God has gone ahead of you Deuteronomy 27 and verse 14 this was a prophetic word that came to my spirit for someone Deuteronomy 27 and verse 14 hallelujah it says and the Levite shall speak and say unto the men of Israel with a loud voice uh-huh it says cause be the man that make it did I get that right cause be the man that maketh any graven or molten image an abomination unto the Lord the work of the hands of craftsman and put it in a secret and all the people shall answer amen please listen this is a word for someone give, leave verse 15 you are about to compromise and dabble into all kinds of satanic things because it looks like serving God does not pay and people are already introducing things bring this charm to your house add this one after all it's just a spiritual thing the Bible says when you make anything that is not of God and put it in the secret in hope that it will help you the jealousy of God itself will fight therefore I decree and declare every temptation towards compromise to bring any other idol and to bring any other extra biblical practice because you are looking for help I declare in the name of Jesus you overcome that temptation now you overcome that temptation now you overcome that temptation now in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah praise the name of the Lord in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19 Paul spoke over the Macedonian church and he says but my God shall supply how many all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus let me speak that over your life this week in the name of Jesus my God may he supply all your needs my God may he supply all your needs my God may he supply all your needs in the name of Jesus Christ I heard a very humbling testimony that was sent to me I think it's a woman I don't know if she's here but sent me a testimony they were crying already owing and whilst they were just praying and meditating that she was led or so to go out to a shop and she was looking gloomy and she just stumbled across someone who had known her for a long time who she had helped as a primary school teacher he had now become a real estate person he saw her identified her greeted her and called her gave her a house immediately <laughs> listen let me speak over your life again make sure you believe what I'm saying may my God supply all your needs may my God supply all your needs may my God supply all your needs for someone may my God surprise you in the name of Jesus Christ Genesis chapter 26 from verse 12 this may be an instruction for someone. The Bible says, and Isaac sowed in that land. Money is not the only thing you sow. 
you can sow yourself dig yourself into knowledge bury yourself and Isaac sowed in that land but for someone it can be a prophetic instruction listen let me tell you I know that people have made all kinds of abuses about finances but can I tell you sacrificial giving is a mysterious principle even in the times of hardship I'm not telling you things that I I that I just read about this is my life that in the time of famine he sowed in that land and received so was receive so was receive an hundredfold and the Lord blessed him verse 13 the Bible says the man works great in famine he went forward he grew until he became very great the famine notwithstanding I decree and declare in the name of Jesus Christ in this season while others are saying there is a casting down let me release a word over someone rise to a new level rise to a new level rise to a new level in the name of Jesus Christ every time I have the opportunity to speak over your life I must speak favor I wish I have the time to give you personal testimonies last week to this week God did something in my life that almost left me in tears and I said God I know you as a mighty God but you never stop bringing surprises to men this is something, look, let me tell you, when God decides to place his grace upon your life, your life becomes an unending wonder. I want to pray from the depth of my heart. This is my assignment. I'm not preaching. Mine is for you to receive. If you like, you can look around and be doubting. If you like, you can open your heart sincerely and receive and allow God to change your life. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus Christ, May the mantle, the unction, the anointing that distinguishes you and compels men to come and bless you. I release that grace upon you now. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Upon your head, receive it now. Upon your hands, receive it now. Upon your feet, receive it now. One more time. Upon your head, receive it now. Upon your hands, receive it now. Upon your feet, receive it now. I say it again. Upon your head, receive it now. Upon your hands, receive it now. And upon your feet, receive it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen. The grace upon your head is for illumination and understanding. The grace upon your hand is for productivity and the grace upon your feet is for direction and speed. Now you understand what I'm releasing. In the name of Jesus, upon your head, let this grace rest upon you. Upon your hands, may this grace rest upon you. Upon your feet, let this grace rest upon you. Koinoni, I declare one more time. Upon your head, may this grace rest upon you extraordinary illumination by the Spirit upon your hands may this grace rest upon you and upon your feet receive speed and direction in the name of Jesus Christ it says and I will give you a wisdom and a mouthpiece that your adversary will not be able to gain say nor resist I place something upon you that from today as you speak in the name of Jesus those who have what it takes to bless you may they hear you as you speak those who have what it takes to help you may they hear you two more prayers two more prayers Hallelujah. In Acts chapter 27 and verse 22, they were with Paul going to a place called Crete and there was a storm. And the Bible says as a result of that storm, they lost their properties. The ship was about to capsize and they were about to lose their lives. 
And Paul stood up and said, And now I exhort you, be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss. This just came into my spirit now. I want to speak to someone from the way things look right now it looks like you have lost money it looks like you have lost your place you have lost the job but i stand under this apostolic and prophetic mandate and i declare there shall be no loss koinonia global there shall be no loss not of your life not of your properties not of strategic relationships there shall be no loss there shall be no loss in the name of Jesus final declaration over your life and I want you to please listen carefully I will always make reference to John 5 the man who was crippled for 38 years he was there lying down when Jesus came to him and said do you desire to be healed he said I have no man that was his problem you may have talent but do you have a man to help you you may have your gift but do you have a man every business needs a man every ministry needs a man there are people who are anointed but those to declare them to the nations they have not encountered them i love it every time i declare to call men because let me tell you men are very relevant when it has to do with your rising and your shining are we together no matter how graced and gifted you are even if you are jesus alone without a man will only leave you in pain and tragedy therefore i decree and declare the strategic men some of you have a lot of men in your life but none of them is strategic enough for your destiny quality strategic men i bring them to your life now quality strategic men i bring them to your life now quality strategic helpers financiers announcers i bring them to your life now hallelujah